my bulls. Oh man, how are they playing? How's it going, guys? It is MWT here with another NBA recap video. We got to go over the December 11th Wednesday games. And I want to make sure you guys understand. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I see we just hit 167. Just remember, I'd like to hit 200 by the end of 2019. So when we enter 2020, we got 200 right there on 2020. And we can start 2020 off with a bang. Okay? So share with your friends. And definitely subscribe to the channel with post notifications turned on. Let's get into these Wednesday, December 11th games. Because first, we got to talk about the Houston Rockets taking on the Cleveland Cavaliers. And why, I don't know why this was a close game. Because Houston wins this game 116 to 110. I mean, we knew it was going to happen. The Cleveland Cavaliers suck, but to be that close, James Harden drops 55 points, 3 rebounds, 8 assists, 2 steals, 2 blocks with 6 turnovers. And for Cleveland, off the bench, Kevin Porter Jr. led the way with 24 points, 2 rebounds, 3 assists, and 3 steals. Now, matchup-wise, you know, the Rockets had a 14-point lead in the third quarter. They blew that, let the Cavs go up by 11 in the fourth quarter, and then they rallied back and won the game by 6. So, um, yeah, Houston, this, is, this shouldn't be a close game. You should be blowing out the Cavaliers, not having it be so close. Now, the next game we've got to go over is the Indiana Pacers taking on the Boston Celtics. Yep, Indiana won this game, 122-117 to 117 in what was, you know, a pretty good game. Boston's main scorer, Kemba Walker, oh my goodness, 44 points, 3 rebounds, 7 assists, 2 steals, and for Indiana, Malcolm Brogdon again, 29 points in 29 minutes, 15 for 15 from the free throw line, looking like the claw out there, 2 rebounds, 8 assists, and 2 steals. Now, matchup wise, you know, the Pacers were up by 13 points in the uh, second quarter, and they let the Celtics go up by 10 points into the fourth quarter, and then they rallied back and won the game by five. No, like, you know, big quarters, other than Boston scored 37, I believe, and won uh, in the third quarter, but nothing huge. Now, the Lakers beat the Orlando Magic 96-87, to thanks in part because this is Anthony Davis's team, and no one cares. And plus, the Orlando Magic scored nine points in the first quarter, so you can thank them for that. Now, LA's main scorer was, of course, 3-6. and six. He was 1-for-6 from the three-point line. He had 25 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists, 2 steals, and 6 turnovers because he needs to pat them stats. Now, Jonathan Isaac led the way for Orlando with 19 points. 19 points, 8 rebounds, and 1 steal and 2 blocks. Now, matchup-wise, you know, the Orlando Magic had a 1-point lead in the first quarter. You know they never led after that. They, they played like garbage in the first quarter, and then they tried but failed. Tried to come back from down 24, but failed. So, yeah, and they lost the game by 9. They did tie the game in the fourth quarter, which I'll give them props for, but you need to close out a game. And you shouldn't have a start like you did. Now, the Clippers went to Toronto, and Kawhi Leonard got that ring. And let me tell you something. That was funny when I heard the story that in the middle of it, inside the ring, is a... Like, middle finger emoji. That was funny. That was funny. I guess that's towards the haters. Now, Clippers main score, of course, Kawhi Leonard. 23 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals. And for Toronto's sake, Pascal Siakam again, dropping 24 points. 24 points, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, 1 steal, and 3 blocks. And Kyle Lowry had 6 points, 0 for 7 from the 3-point line. He shot 4 free throws and made all of them. And that flopping fish basically, you know, he was bad out there. He was bad. Now, the Raptors were up by six points in the first quarter, and they tried holding on to that. And then the Clippers just buried them. We're up by 24 points in the uh, fourth quarter, and that was all she wrote. 20-point win for the Clippers. And I believe they are in second place in the Western Conference. This team is dangerous. This team is dangerous like we all knew they were going to be. Oh, no. I don't want to pick. Now, Charlotte versus Brooklyn. Devontae Graham is going to be a serious threat for Rookie of the Year. I don't know if he's going to be an all-star, but he would be 
a great, like, rookie of the year candidate. Now, Charlotte's main scorer, of course, Devontae Graham. 40 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists. And for Brooklyn, it was none other than Spencer Dinwiddie with 24 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, 1 steal. Kyrie Irving still out. Charlotte takes the win by 5. And they actually came down from being down 20 to the Brooklyn Nets in the second quarter. They started rallying back and they won the game by 5, which was their largest lead of the night. So, good job Charlotte. You are going to end up just like the Detroit Pistons. You will not make the playoffs and you will be stuck in the middle with my Chicago Bulls. Now, next game we got to go over is of course my Chicago Bulls beating the Atlanta Hawks. What a game. You want to know the score? 136 to 102. That's how you get it done, Chicago. A 40 point third quarter by my Chicago Bulls. That's what I'm talking about. Atlanta's main scorer off the bench, Alex Len, 17 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists. And for Chi Town, Zach Levine, 35 points, 2 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 steal, 1 block. That's how you get it done. And. The Hawks were up by 8 points in the first quarter. Guess what? We piled down the points and we kept on piling on. We're up by 35 in the fourth quarter. And guess what happened? We still won the game by 34. So, that's how you get it done, Chicago. That's how you get it done. You got to have these good games. You got to have these big games. All right? Got to have these nice nights where you're playing really high. You know, not, not scoring low. You got to play really high. And Zach Levine did that in three quarters. Check that out. Now, Utah took on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Of course, Utah won this game. 127 to 116, the final score. And let's take a look at the box score. Utah's main scorer, Donovan Mitchell. 30 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, and 1 block. And for Minnesota, off the bench, Jeff Teague with 32 points, 4 rebounds, 6 assists, 1 steal, and 1 block. Matchup-wise, the Timberwolves were up by one point in the first quarter, like going into the second. They never led after that and let the Jazz go up by 20 points five different times in the fourth quarter. And, of course, the Jazz win this game by 11 points. That's a field goal for y'all, but Cody Parkey would definitely doink it. <laughs> I love that. Now, next, Memphis took on the Phoenix Suns, and, of course, the Grizzlies win this game. Which was a shocker. It was a shocker because I thought the Suns were going to win. 115 to 108, the final score. Let's take a look at this box score. Memphis's main score was Dylan Brooks. 27 points, 3 rebounds, 1 assist, 2 steals. And for the Phoenix Suns, it was Frank Kaminsky. He had 24 points, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, and 1 steal. Matchup wise, you know, the Suns were up by 11 points in the first quarter. That was the beginning of the game. Then they blew that, let it go back and forth. 11 lead changes in this game. And then the Grizzlies go up by 10 points in the fourth quarter and win the game by 7. So, Phoenix has got to do something. Because right now, they are tied with the Oklahoma City Thunder. But conference percentage does matter. And that's why Oklahoma City is in that picture. Um... Yeah, it's going to be interesting this year, actually, because uh, 13 teams are definitely still competing, if you include Memphis, because I don't think New Orleans and Golden State are going to compete. You got a bunch of teams competing for the Western Conference, 7th and 8th seed. Oh, this is going to be, this is going to be a, a wild year. Now, 16 games, a 16-game win streak by the Bucks, thanks in part to them beating New Orleans, 127 to 112. Now, can I just say something? Why did the Pelicans have a 40 point to 36 point third quarter? Y'all trying to compete against these Bucks? New Orleans main scorer, J.J. Redick. He had 31 points, one rebound, two assists. Now, Milwaukee, you want to know who it was? It was actually Eric Bledsoe because Giannis was out. Giannis didn't play this game. 29 points. Three rebounds, six assists, and two steals. I like watching Bledsoe play. He's a really explosive player. Now, the Pelicans were up by one point in the first quarter. They never led after that. Let the Bucks go up by 28 points in the second quarter. And the Bucks still held, held on to that lead and won the game by 15. After that one-point lead, New Orleans never held the lead. So, 
Y'all gotta work on it. Like, seriously. You guys only have six wins. I was thinking you guys were gonna at least be a, a top ten team. And then look what happened. Now, the Kings beat the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's all I gotta say. 94 to 93, the final score. Um, there's this YouTuber out here who is apparently a fan of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Yeah, um, about that. Your main scorer was off the bench. Dennis Schroeder was 17 points, two rebounds, two steals, and one block. And for Sacramento, none other than Buddy Heald again. 23 points, seven rebounds, six assists, and one steal. Matchup-wise, the Kings were up by six points in the first quarter. They blew that, let the Thunder go up by 14, and then they come back and win the game by one. Seven lead changes in this game, uh, just for you guys, just so you know. And um, let's go on to our last game, Golden State. Golden State lost to the New York Knicks in overtime. Let me remind you, they lost in overtime. Yeah, that New York Knicks team. The New York Knicks are 6-21 and and are in 15th place in the Eastern Conference. Golden State is 5-23. and New York's main scorer, Marcus Moore Sr. with 36 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists, and 3 steals. Golden State, however, D'Angelo Russell. 32 points, 3 rebounds, 3 rebounds, 3 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals. Now, matchup-wise, the New York Knicks were up by 22 points in the second quarter. They blew that faster than you can say New York Knickerbocker. And guess what? Golden State went up by 2. Doesn't matter because... You know, New York went up by eight. But the Knicks still blew an eight-point lead. <laughs> and Golden State tied the game, moved into overtime, and they couldn't just hang with the New York Knicks, of course, and they lose by two points. So, 12 lead changes in this game overall. New York almost blew a game. If they blew a game to the Golden State Warriors, I would have laughed. I would have laughed. Because that is that's just hilarious to me. Anyways, thank you for watching. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed. And make sure you subscribe to the channel with post notifications turned on. I will see you guys in the next video, December 12th, NBA recap. So, see you guys next time.